Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Journey podcast. Today I have Sarah Mack with me. Hello Sarah, how are you? Hello there Rebecca, I'm very well thank you, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good thanks, really well indeed. Good. Now Sarah you are a menopause and wellness coach. Okay. I am indeed which sounds really good. And I'm going to let all our listeners into a little bit of a secret. I have used your services, all right? And that's one of the reasons I've got you onto the podcast. But before we get into all of that, how did you end up here? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's quite a story. All right. Well, that's what we're here to Okay, listen. here goes. Um, so... I um, started with menopausal symptoms myself at the tender age of 42. I'm 47 now. Which is quite um, young, isn't it? Which is quite young, yes. And like most women, I think, of my generation, we're completely unprepared for menopause. To be honest, I didn't even realise I was in perimenopause. I didn't really give it a second thought. Yeah. Now, going back to 2016 my husband actually had suffered a major heart attack at the age of 48 um and at that time I was working in HR in my family business um and it came obviously as a bolt out the blues so a good Friday morning we were actually working out at the time oh my goodness and in one room of the house me in the other room of the house um, and he came in all clammy and sweaty and we just thought he was, you know, had a bit of a rough workout and needed to sort of, you know, cool down. But as it turned out, it's a long story, but we ended up in a and &E suffering a major heart attack. So that sort of uh, preoccupied our thoughts at that yeah. time. Um, yeah. And that led me in 2016 down the path of nutrition I was always interested in health and in nutrition at that, at that time anyway mainly just for my own benefit but obviously when Andy suffered his heart attack I thought well I really need to start and do a deep dive now yeah. um to do everything we could as he was only 48 as well to aid his recovery so yes yeah, so we went down that route I started to study nutrition and uh, just a year later in 2017 we actually launched our own brand of nutritional supplements oh, off wow. the back of how um, Andy had recovered and how he'd used nutrition and supplementation to aid his own recovery and how it had massively benefited him we just decided one day, well, why don't we? We're buying all these supplements, you know, we're getting them from all different kinds of sources. Why don't we source our own and provide our own range of trusted supplements? We know where they're coming from, you know, we know that they're sourced and made in the UK. So we actually launched our own brand of nutritional supplements really? uh, back in 2017, at which we still have that brand. We still run that business together. That's Fortress Health. Um, and then in, uh, well, it would have been two years later when I was 42, right. I actually started to wake up in the night soaked in sweat and suffering heart palpitations and panic attacks. And it's the first time I've ever suffered anything like this in my life. Pacing right. up and down the bedroom, thought I was having a heart attack. These were coming fast and frequent in the night. Um, so bad, I was so soaked in sweat in the night that I was having to change the sheets on the bed, I was having to lay on the towel, I was utterly exhausted. Not once did I think, oh, I wonder if this could be menopause or perimenopause, or that, that didn't even enter my head, I hadn't even thought about menopause. My mum was of the generation where she didn't talk about no. Menopause. In fact, I was laughing with my husband the other day because uh, I think when she found out I was a, a menopause coach, she was quite horrified, really. <laughs> was she? Oh, I better not mention that to my friends, you know. Ooh, she's going around talking about menopause. <laughs> and she said to me the other day, oh, they're even talking about it on TV now, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Thank goodness. Yes. Thank goodness, uh, but that is the attitude of sort of my mum's generation, my grandma's generation, 
people that I grew up around just never talked about periods, never talked about sex, never talked about menopause. Oh, don't mention these things, a great taboo. Yeah. So I was totally unprepared for, for menopause myself. It wasn't until I started to get hot flushes in the day and I said, something started to occur to me. I thought, well, is this just, you know, a, a reaction, a delayed reaction? I've been through a period of stress with Andy's health scare, with setting up a new business, which is stressful. Um, but eventually I sort of more and more I looked into, oh my goodness, you know, I'm, I think I'm going through menopause. And I did speak to my mum at that time to say, I think I might be going through menopause. When did you go through the menopause? Right. And she said, oh, yes, I was 43. I thought, yeah. oh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it suddenly dawned on me that that's what I was going through. So off I went to the GP to try and get help for myself. Um, nice GP. I'd been under this GP for quite a long time, but he was an older gentleman and he just sort of said, you know, you're too young to be going through menopause you know it'll just be stress it'll just be this it'll just be that maybe you need some antidepressants because I was going through anxiety and low mood mm. I'm like oh no 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 there's no way I want to go down that route um always in favor of uh, you know na natural remedies didn't think I would ever want to go down down the route of HRT Obviously, I'd heard myself all, all the scares that had been in, in the press about that. But the more and more I looked into it, I threw myself into research and education and I helped myself. I eventually went to a very well-known menopause clinic. I actually went to the Newsome Clinic. Oh, yeah. She's headed up by Dr. Louise Newsome. Yeah. She's I really found out. People's lives, I think. I think she has. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's an amazing lady. Yeah. Um, and after speaking to the doctor at their clinic, I thought, well, you know, there's really a lot I don't know about this. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was thinking, oh, I don't want to take HRT because, you know, I've heard it causes breast cancer. And But then the more you learn about HRT and the new modern forms of HRT, the body, body identical HRT, HRT, which I knew nothing about, that actually completely turned me around. I did a complete 360, threw myself into research. It's not, HRT is not right for everybody, but no. it's a route that I went down, it certainly helped me. I don't believe it's a silver bullet. Yeah. Um, you know, I believe that you need to um, introduce nutritional um, and lifestyle changes alongside HRT. Yeah. It certainly isn't a cure on, it isn't right for everybody. And not everybody wants to take it either. Yeah. Um, so the more, more I learned about it, the more I started to feel better. And the more I did to improve my lifestyle through nutrition, through supplementation, through HRT, through changing my exercise routine, to looking into mindfulness and learning about slowing down, reducing stress. I thought, Do you know what, I'm really so interested in this I want to study it so I, that eventually led me to the menopause experts group where I underwent their full training program oh, wow. it's headed up by um, a panel of clinicians psychotherapist experts in in women's health and um, that led me to become a certified menopause coach um, and I wanted to help other women and educate other women who were totally and utterly clueless like myself yeah. going through absolute turmoil in the topsy-turvy world of hormonal chaos and help them to realise that there's so much that they can do to help themselves. There's loads. And after the... so, I've got so many questions for you now, Sarah. After our session, um, I was talking to one of my friends... And she went through a very late menopause. She, hers didn't start until she was 55. And I said to her, her mum died a number of years ago. I said to her, do you know when your mum went through menopause? She said, no idea. We never talked about it. And I, I, the only reason I know when my mum was going through menopause is because she had terrible 
problems with uh, cysts on her ovaries and she uh, had a hysterectomy in her late 40s and then went straight on to HRT after that. So again, you know, I don't know what age she would have gone through a natural menopause. So it's really important that women, if they can, speak to their mums about it because you'll get really good insights. But my friend who went through the late menopause, she's now 60, still experiencing what she thinks are symptoms. But she's got the other thing at the other end. You're too old to experience those. Put yeah. straight onto antidepressants. Yeah. Yeah. And I was telling her about some of the symptoms I've got. And she's got, I've got that. I've got that. And I went, well, it, it's maybe not anxiety caused by depression. It's maybe anxiety caused by the fact that you can't flip in sleep. Everything hurts. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and you just, you know, your brain is befuddled. Discombobulated yeah. is my favorite word. Yeah. <laughs> I love that oh, word. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could use to describe to my husband how I felt. I just like, <laughs> I just feel discombobulated. I don't feel like me, but yes. I'm not depressed, but I'm just, I'm just not right. It's really hard. I don't think we have the language, do we? Necessarily. No. no. Um, yeah, I often use the word chaos okay because when i looked it up in the in the dictionary it says it, it, it describes a, a time of, of disruption and confusion yeah yeah and i think that is a, a really good word it often is confusing and and also there can be confusion because you can do the other thing where you start putting everything down to menopause as well yeah yeah, it's true. when there can be other things at play and sometimes thing other things to rule out as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is a it's it's a very strange time in your life. And it's not dissimilar, is it, I think, to teenage years. Yeah. Where yeah. we go through the hormonal flux at the other side where we're becoming fertile. <laughs> True. And that's a, ooh, that's a roller coaster ride. My, my daughter's going through it at the moment, and it, it's an interesting one. <laughs> Her poor husband's got <laughs> a teenager and, and a menopausal woman. Hey, with my husband, he said to me, he said, I've got a nearly 14 year old daughter and a menopausal wife. And I went, I'm really sorry, babes, but. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah. have to work through it we'll just work yeah. through it together <laughs> yeah and that's something I say is that especially when I talk to people in the workplace we mustn't forget that menopause affects everybody yeah. it has a knock-on effect on everyone on husbands partners yeah. colleagues you know family members our parents I mean we're the, the disruption of menopause comes at a difficult time because we're often what well, the sandwich generation where we're looking after kids that are still at home and also aging parents as well yeah. so you know we can be slap bang in the middle of that and if if we're not coping it has a knock-on effect on those people as well it's true you know, we can't care for other people if, if we're not feeling particularly great ourselves well, the light bulb moment for me, thanks to you, Sarah, uh, was when you were talking about the need for additional rest and how your adrenal glands kick in. So just you, you you're the expert, you say, because that that was a massive light bulb for me. So explain that to everybody because it was so helpful. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing um there's two biggest things that I always recommend to all women, and this is fairly universal for menopausal women, is if you do nothing else, get two things right, reduce your stress levels, and slow down, and two is balance your blood sugar. Super, super important, because the decline in estrogen and progesterone and testosterone, all those hormones decline during menopause, but what happens is, like, like you said, Rebecca, is that you, your adrenal glands take over. Mm -hmm. So what happens in menopause is 
our ovaries stop functioning and they stop producing the hormones because we no longer have any periods, we're no longer fertile. So our ovaries have no longer have the need to produce the, those hormones required for that function. But to keep our hormones in balance, to keep our bodies and our health stable, our adrenal glands then take over the job of producing the hormones in smaller amounts and in a different weaker form, but they take over producing the estrogen that was once produced in our ovaries. And that's supposed to keep us in a, in a state of homeostasis. But unfortunately, our adrenal glands, one of their major roles and what they're mainly responsible for is producing the stress hormones, the cortisol and the adrenaline. And they will always, always prioritise survival. So our bodies always prioritise survival over anything else. Okay. And our, our, our body's interpretation of survival now is very different to what it was. <laughs> Eons ago, I'm used to be chased by say the two tigers. Yeah, there's, there's none of those around anymore. No, it now thinks when we're stuck in traffic or, or we're late for work or, or there's, you know, we've got a deadline to meet or something like that. Our body thinks that we are fighting off a saber tooth tiger yeah. and it will prioritize survival in, in those situations and we will. It will prioritize our adrenals will prioritize producing the adrenaline and the cortisol for the fight or flight response and we can become in a chronic state of stress where our adrenals are constantly pumping out these hormones and they have to prioritize that over producing the estrogen that yeah. it's supposed to be doing in once we've reached menopause so we've got stress levels and, and our stress levels naturally increase as we go through menopause and we also our cells can naturally become insulin resistant as well because the increase in cortisol can cause our cells to become naturally insulin resistant during menopause so this is why it's super super important to reduce your stress levels so we can stop creating that constant stream of stress hormones and we can allow our adrenals to take over and, and produce the estrogen that it needs to produce in menopause and then also by balancing out our blood sugar as well we're helping our cells not to have those blood sugar spikes and crashes as well so it can really even things out and help to stabilize some of those really troublesome menopause symptoms alongside other things I mean like I say I I'm on HRT and I think it's been a great thing for me personally. Um, it's not right for everybody, but, you know, we can make these natural changes um, to actually stabilise our body without needing to necessarily. Some women can be very, very lucky and go through menopause with very few symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lucky my friend, them. My friend Margaret went, <laughs> oh, I just it was over in a year and it was fine. I was like, bitch, that's just not fair. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what the fuss is about. Uh, uh. So you you gave me and this is really interesting. I loved your coaching because I don't know whether you realize this, but with that information, you gave me the permission, probably for the first time since I was 14, to to not run around like an idiot to actually have official permission to go do you know what you just need to slow right down and just yeah. rest more yeah so since about the age of 14 I don't know what you were like or anybody else but I have been so driven to you know get my o levels get my a levels leave home get my degree get a job get a house get climb the career ladder start a business grow a business get a, you know etc 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 and for the first time whilst juggling three kids a divorce and married again and all the rest of it and yeah. for the first time ever I, I've just gone no I'm not doing it I'm just yeah. I'm not doing it so yeah. I, since we have spoken I made a mental choice to 
to not be busy anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Well done. I'm loving that. It's it's the biggest piece of advice that I can give to anybody who's listening to this who's struggling with menopause is for goodness sake, please, out of any time in your life, prioritise your self-care now more than ever. Start putting yourself first for a change because we don't, do we, as women? Like you've just said, we we're all things to all people aren't we we tend to try to be everyone and everything and we're, we're our own worst critic and our own worst enemy we berate ourselves if we're not being superwoman but like I've just said you can't care effectively for other people if you're absolutely defunct yourself mm-hmm. um, and so many career women as well you know, like like yourself, Rebecca, you know, the high flying, that got great careers, you know, C-suite executives go through menopause too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I wonder? I don't know how old Liz Truss is. Exactly. She's the same age as me, I think. Is so, she? I'm thinking, bless her. <laughs> a woman has <laughs> taken on the one of the world's hardest jobs Seeing yes. the death of the longest serving monarch two days into one of the world's hardest jobs, and she's about to go into perimenopause. The poor woman. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So, Liz Truss, if you're listening to this, can yeah. you please at least take some time out each day? Definitely. For self care, because it yeah. is so important. Yeah, but yeah. it is, it's a time to slow down. But What happens as well, and one thing I always urge is please, I encourage women through my coaching as part of it is to start to do what I call a life audit Mm -hmm. and to look at the areas in their life where they can start to delegate and they can start to pass some things because we're not good at that either, are we? Oh, I'll just do that. I mean, I'm guilty of it myself. You know, I should sometimes follow my own advice. I do try. I'm not perfect. (laughs) You know, my daughter will come down. Oh, I haven't got this. Oh, just give it to me. I'll line it. Mm. You know, but we need to start looking at things. Where can we start to get help, you know? Can we start to just do a list and do an online shopping, have a shopping rotor where we have four weekly rotor of meals and we put the same list through our online shopping? Can we, you know, start to just delegate some of the tasks if we're in a fortunate enough position to get a cleaner in, for goodness sake, do it. You know, yeah. uh, don't you know for a long time. About it. Yeah. 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 Just, you know, take some time. If it's just time to go and have a bath and shut the door and light some candles and just be on your own or read a book, go for a walk. I mean, you know, part of my studies led me to mindfulness because I realised the importance for me in in dealing with my panic attacks and my panic disorder during menopause. Mindfulness has been a big part of that for me. And it's something that, you know, through my coaching, I gradually start to introduce as well Mm -hmm. to say, well, you just take some mindful moments in the day because that's when you can really start to, again, like I said, bring those just slow down. I've gone, I've definitely, I've gone back to my transcendental meditation. I'd kind of lost track of that a little bit and I've definitely gone back to that, which is great. And as I say, just... Do you know what it is? It's stopped feeling bad about not being busy. Yeah. That's that's the thing I'm, I'm so over now, which is fabulous. Now, Brilliant. two things. One, I, I've met your husband, Andy, on a Zoom call through other bits of business, and he's great. Yeah. He looks like he's in perfect health. I'm assuming <laughs> he's all right. Yes. Good. Phew. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, fitter and healthier than, than he's ever been, funnily yes. enough. Yes. And sometimes you have things happen to you, you have health events which push you to improve your life um, in so many different ways. And, you know, he's had to learn, one of the big things he's had to learn, again, is, is to reduce stress. Right. 
stress is one of you know it throws just throws our body into complete haywire and I do blame modern modern life for the reason why menopause symptoms are often as, as bad as they are because of the way we live our lives do you think in less stressful times they just weren't as bad yes I do right yeah I do think that I think modern life and I think you know I think th there's a thing now oh why are we making such a fuss about menopause that's always been around well of course it has it's always been there women have always been through menopause but of course we're living longer now yeah. we're leading more demanding lives and yeah. um, I was looking at a figure the other day 4.4 million women uh in the UK workforce today who were aged between 50 and 64 right. and it's the fastest growing demographic in the UK workforce today right? so you know we're living longer we've got longer careers we're staying in the workplace we're we're, we're in high high powered jobs yeah. you just mentioned Liz Trust there you know we, we're still here we, we're alive and kicking we're not retirement age yet you know we're still working we're still out there we, we're we're valuable we're valuable to society you know we've got so much experience we've got so much to give yet one in four of those women are actually leaving the workforce they're actually leaving the jobs due to the menopause symptoms so you know part of what i do is support in the workplace um is providing training and web i do webinars and uh workshops for managers for hr and for employees as well providing um menopause awareness workshops because education is key you know you i would say you don't know what you don't know and and you know some of this is not not actually I say it's not actually rocket science, but it's things that we don't often know or we don't think about. You know, me just explaining to you, Rebecca, about your stress levels and why it's so important. Having that knowledge now makes you think, oh gosh, it makes sense, and I really do need to do that. Yeah, and you understand why. So education is key to really helping keep these women in work and, and keep women functioning well and you know there's no reason why we shouldn't be thriving in menopause and okay. seeing it as a great time in our lives because it is not all doom and gloom I don't want any younger women listening to this yeah. oh my god I'm so terrified of the menopause and, and hitting that stage in my life because you know there's so much great information out there. There's so much great help. There's so yeah. much happening now to break down these two. I'm so proud of our generation that we're really the first generation that's flying the flag yeah. and that's breaking down these ridiculous taboos yeah. of why we can't just talk about menopause because the more we talk about it, the more we learn about it, the more we know how to control our symptoms how to help ourselves where to get help yeah. and um you know continue to thrive because we've got so much of life ahead of us it's true and you know the upsides of it and if anybody who listens to this know that i swear quite a lot i'm from manchester and yeah I just, <laughs> you you get i'm from west yorkshire so there's not much i am no. uh so <laughs> After 45, you just give less and less of, of a fuck, basically, yes. as you get older. And that's definitely a massive upside that you, you get to a point, don't you? Like, I don't care that I've got saggy, flabby bits. No. It doesn't matter. I don't care that I want to be comfy in my big pants or wear flat yeah. shoes. I just don't. Yeah anymore Good. you also I, I think as well you don't suffer fools anymore you just don't know about you but I'm, I'm just like do you know what I'm just working with people I like that's yeah it. <laughs> everybody else can go away I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely it's one of the best things about getting older and yeah. wiser that you just think do you know what I don't need to put up with that crap anymore yeah, yeah. really don't so you just don't yeah. which is great and that is a massive upside and you're right yeah. and and since 
having my session with you, I got the Peruvian ginseng. Great. Top tip. Yeah. Good. Well done. And I got my Omega-3. Yeah. Feeling good. Uh, so I've got this balance now, and I think I've got it about right, actually. Fantastic. I've got another session next week, so I'll give you a full update on that. But yeah. it actually now I'm feeling less and less discombobulated um and just much more on an even keel and it and it's great so again yeah. for anybody out there please you know the doctors the, the doctors are very constrained by their nhs protocols they literally have a little list of things they're allowed to do then they're, yeah. they're not really allowed to go off script so no. I would urge anybody to seek out somebody like you, Sarah, who's qualified, clearly extremely knowledgeable, and just get a little bit of additional help and support, definitely. Yes. So where, where are you taking your business? Where is it going to head? Oh, well, just I just want to help as many women as possible, as many women as possible. So, you know, it's... I offer, as I say, I offer one-to-one -one coaching, so that's open to anybody and everybody. You can go to my website, you can book a session one-to-one um, -one with me online. Or um, I'm going into workplaces, and one of the things that I'm trying to offer now is educating women through their employers. Right. So right. they can get the education that they need to help themselves, which helps them in both in the home life and in the work life. So it is a two-pronged approach because we spend a lot of time at work and we spend a lot of time, okay. often more time than we do at home. So it's getting support from all angles to really, really help help these women that are, that are really struggling because some women, they are struggling really yeah, quite badly. Yeah, they are. What's your website called? Say it out it's loud. It's sarahmack.co.uk. sarahmack.co.uk. So and head over there. There's information on everything that I do, menopause at work and one-to-one -one coaching. You can, there's a link in there if you want to, to book a session with me. I usually do an hour and 15 minutes as an initial session, as a discovery session, as a form to fill in beforehand. Um, and then we can go through it. Because one thing I've learned is every woman's experience of menopause is different. That's been a big thing for me. All, all the different women that I've that I've helped and that I've spoken to, it's that we are all different. Like I say, some women are very lucky and have no symptoms, and some women suffer terribly and have a multitude of problems. So you know, it's coming up with a unique, tailored solutions and helping. What I do is. Uh, there's no judgment from me. There's no preaching. There's no saying this is what you've got to do and what you haven't got to do. It's it's talking to you about what your options are, helping you to understand what's going on with you, and also coming up with some practical solutions, but allowing you to make the right right choices for you. Yeah, definitely. And that's what it's about. Uh, if your business had a personality or a character, how would you describe it, Sarah? This is my last question. Oh, uh, a cuddly, fluffy animal that's there to give you a big hug because that's <laughs> what we all need. It's like a big hug through the computer. Come here, come here, have a hug. I understand. I know what you're going through. <laughs> oh, I love yeah, that. That's you a... You've got to have a laugh, haven't you, as well? You know, I like to laugh at myself and laugh at the situation, inject a bit of humour. But yeah, I would say, if, you know, if you want to log on and have a little hug through a computer, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Baramac.co.uk. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And I can highly recommend your services. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Rebecca. And I'm pleased that you're, you're feeling uh, back on an even keel again. It's great to see.